through your booking resume chronologically. Well, I did the thing with Watts for, I think, two months, which was kind of my... I'm glad I did it there because it taught me... Okay, I said I went to Kevin and gave him all those ideas, but he... The first place I really did it after Watts was WCW, and that was probably 96. Mm -hmm. um, and for 96 and 97, I was Kevin's understudy, and that was when the NWO was going on. Um, it's when uh, Hulk came over, and Kevin was really brilliant. And it sounds like I'm kissing his rear end. I'm very indebted to Kevin Sullivan for his mentoring, and it was brutal. It wasn't like he held my hand and led me through it. I mean, he beat me to death emotionally and verbally. Mm -hmm. If you know Kevin, brah, nah, yeah, you know, I mean. But the lessons I learned from him t lasted with me my whole life. The thing that Kevin taught me, and anybody who ever wants to be a creative writer or booker, the best advice Kevin ever gave me was, you have to be able to book the match, the finish, and the return. If you can't do those three things, don't book the match. And if you think about it, people now book matches, don't know what the finish is, and don't know what the return is, because the two names together might draw a number. And then when you run somebody down, or you get somebody else involved, and there's not a clean finish, or there's not a satisfying or compelling ending, you start disgusting your audience. Mm. And that was the best advice he ever gave me. Because i that's when I went, oh my God. Because there's a real responsibility to the talent and the audience to, to give them a compelling product that makes them want to tune in next week. I wasn't caught up in the sponsors and all that stuff. I didn't care about all that. I mean, that wasn't my, I wanted to write good TV. And I wanted to help Kevin. And we had all those unique characters. But then the politics part of it. And in 99, I got so frustrated um, when I found out we were going to beat Goldberg at the end of 87, uh, I quit. I quit January 8th of 99. Mm -hmm. And I walked right outside, I think it was in Columbus, Ohio, and I called Vince McMahon and said, uh, I'm unemployed and I would like to work for you. And he said, okay, I'll send the plane to get you right now. And that's when we were in the middle of the Monday Night Wars. And I was... Monday night I quit WCW, and then Tuesday I was at Vince McMahon's house doing writing the TV show. Were you able to easily integrate into that system? <laughs> when Vince he made you poultry last time you worked for him, for Christ's sake. Uh, yeah, and people still remember that, and nobody remembers Terry Taylor, so who's right and who's wrong? Oh, I don't know about that. Well, but go ahead. Point well taken. I walk into Vince, Bruce, Vince McMahon's house and I'm sitting at his dining room table like, with a suit and tie on because that's what I wore back then and here comes Vince Russo who didn't dress up um, and Ed Ferrara and if looks could kill because McMahon never told Russo he was hiring me I was the enemy I was the head writer for WCW and the next day I'm writing for the WWE holy crap Vince Russo hated me I mean, just not me, Terry Taylor, but the WCW trader that, you know, was at change camps. That took me about two or three months to kind of chip away at the ice. And we got to, we're still good friends now, but that was, and then working there was great because Vince was, the thing that Russo was so good at is he, every, everything that I held sacred as far as a wrestling writer, he just, Vince exploded it. He exploded it. He just pulled the curtain back. He was, you know, going off campus, love affairs with husband, wives, mothers, five. I mean, there was nothing that was off limits for him. And it was uncharted territory. And I was like, and then, you know, McMahon would say, yes, we're doing that. We can't do that like that, but we'll do it this way. And, and Russo was just throwing ideas. Brilliant. I mean, brilliant ideas. And I was like, He's I mean, just phenomenal. They were on such a roll. Everybody on that roster, when when Russo left in September, October, or November of '99 to go to WCW, when he left, everybody on that WWE roster had a story or at least had some sort of angle that made them unique. Whether it was Crash Holly carrying the scale, to you know the Undertaker, to Austin and the Rock. I mean, everybody had a story. Mm. It was amazing. What was your tenure in WWE? That time I went in January 8th of 99 and I left in November of 99. And then? Went back to WCW. WCW. Vince, asked, Vince Russo asked me to come back and help him there because he said, you know the personalities. He was in that big mess of personalities and big contracts and guarantees with up to WWE. McMahon would fire somebody. Right.